15 years ago, Jillian and Sean Fuller were married. And before they knew it, they learned their family was going to grow fast. I think it was, what, about a year? About a year later, we got pregnant with the twins. Mm -hmm. And on November 1st, 2006, Kensley Ellen Fuller and Jackson Jonathan Fuller entered the world. They were just the joys of, of our existence. But they learned quick that with a double bundle of joy, not everything is as you might expect. You know, we've got old, two older children. They're 15 months apart. How different can it be? Very different. <laughs> and so the Fullers began a new chapter in their lives, wrapping their world around their family. They were both very happy children. We did a lot of things together. And with twins, as much as they are alike in many ways, they're also very different. Jack, we always called him Mr. Meet and Greet because he had just such the, the friendly, outgoing personality. Kensley was a little bit shyer and had to get to know you a little bit. And we could tell very early on that she was highly intelligent by not only the early speech, but the understanding that she seemed to show. I think it's pretty typical when you've got a child that their father is a physician and then it would turn into I want to see daddy's medical books. She would look at his anatomy books and anything, you know, that he had that was medical. Every papa is proud of his little girl and will waste no time in telling you how bright she is. But with Kensley, it may have been just a little bit different. Her desire to gain knowledge, particularly about medicine, was uncanny. She knew what hypertension was. She knew what diabetes was. She knew how to treat diabetes. Um, all because she constantly asked me questions about these things. And if you ask this precocious five-year-old girl about someday working with her daddy, she had a quick answer. Oh, no, no. My dad is just a family practice doctor. I will be a cardiothoracic surgeon. And that, that was her. That was her. She was like I mean, a sponge for knowledge. She really was. But in May of 2012, Kinsley became weak and short of breath, leading to weeks of tests. The Fullers brought her to Palmetto Children's Hospital in hopes of an explanation and help. Did all kinds of testing, um, looking for viruses and bacteria and allergens and fungus, and just nothing was showing up, so we didn't know why she was ill. And the odd part, none of the rest of us was sick either. Ultimately, she was taken by ambulance to MUSC in Charleston, where all the stops were pulled out. There was even talk of a lung transplant, all with the goal of saving this little girl. But the Fullers had to accept a reality that no parent should ever face, that things were not going to turn out as they had hoped. And so, on July 19th, 2013, uh, that's when we lost her. But even through the pain, this family found comfort. You know, there are people that lose children in horrific ways and they don't get to say goodbye and so for that at least I am thankful that when my little girl left this world that she was being loved and sang to and comforted. But that's not the end of Kiki's story. Tomorrow we're going to learn how the Fullers have taken this dream of this very special little six-year-old girl and turned it into a reality. Yeah, all with the help of one of these, a light bulb.